So the reason why there is suffering in the world is so that since God can't intervene with free will, then he has to allow people to choose to pillage, rape, and murder. So in other words, by God giving us free will, he's ordained rape and murder. However, if God is sovereign and he has allowed or even ordained rape and murder, then that would make God supposedly evil. But then when Job says, after he has all his family and servants carried off, who knows, raped, murdered, um, you know, and then, and then his cattle destroyed and his children destroyed in the house, people being carried off. Job, after losing his children and everything, tears his robes, falls down on his face, shaves his head, and worships God, saying, naked I came into the world, and naked I shall leave it. And God has given, and God has taken away. Focus on the given part. God has given everything, and God has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all these things, he did not blame God. It's very strange, isn't it? But then again, do we know the beginning from the end? If anyone knows the beginning from the end, knows everything about the world and how everything runs in the universe and has reasons, what would those reasons be? Why such horrific suffering in the world? You know, he destroyed the earth in a flood. Either way, those people were wicked, but then... He created them. What of Adam and Eve in the garden? Adam and Eve. Well, I see them as two children playing next to a stove. They're left in the garden naked. They don't know any better. And God allows, <laughs> and if you look at Job, ordains a test. And they failed. But God knew there was gonna, that there was going to be failure. For if you kind of think about this, if God is sovereign and controls everything, and this is what the Arminian says, that God isn't in control because he grants free will. So he granted free will, and he did not intervene with free will when free will raped and murdered. It doesn't make any sense. But he grants free will. Well, if you think about it, like same thing with a computer. When you generate a random number, with a computer, the computer actually has to make the number random. <laughs> so there's no such thing as a random number in computing. And so there's no such thing as random free will with God. It's impossible. It has been proven that man does not have free will. And so this whole idea of free will is nonsense. So what are you left with? Well, you're left with John 666, John 666, and John 665. He said, nobody can come to the Father unless the Father grants it to them. Well, well that's, that's choice. That's, that, that's God's choice, not your choice. You don't choose. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's choose. Oh, choose this day. Yeah, but the choice, you know, the steps of a man, God's the one who guides the heart. It is he who works in you both the will and to do. He has made some vessels for in noble purposes and some for mercy. But why did he do it? Oh, Romans 9 was about, it was about nations. No, it was not. For, for in, I believe it's verse uh, 27, he speaks about even us who are being saved now. So even us who are being saved now is not nations. It's even us among the Jews and the Gentiles. Anybody who understands this understands that God is sovereign to do what God does. Shall the, shall the potter say to the clay, why have you made me thus? This goes back to, to um, I believe it's is it Isaiah. 
it's in the 40s, about a king that he chose to save the people and he did not will to be saved. God just made him do what God wanted him to do. Same with Paul. So if you look at it either way, if you look at, well, God saved everybody, or did God save only those who he's chosen to, to, to save? And if you look at the Bible, the word the chosen, and that's the ecclesia, is all throughout the Bible. The Jews are the chosen people, and the cho church is the chosen. Every time you see the word church, it means chosen. So you're left with this puzzle. Well, I could tell you something. I don't know the ins and outs of the universe, and I don't question them. I don't judge a God that's, by the way, God. <laughs> I take my golden ticket of salvation, and I tell other, others of the truth of the gospel, and I shut up. Whether God did it and wanted to show us his mercy, because, oh, we don't have free will. Well, I'm making this video right now. And I'm doing it because I want to. But ultimately, I want to because God's working my will. So am I ever doing anything against my will if God is working through me? I will to do what I will, whether I know that God is working in me or not. These are very strange things. But what I can tell you is this, is that God's salvation is real. And if you want it, then then ask, seek, and knock, and pray. Because God saves those who call for him, even though maybe God is working in your heart to do so. I pray that he is. But in the meantime, I don't, I don't stand in judgment of God, nor his created Satan, who says, you know, he wants to be he wants to choose his autonomy, his law. That's why he, he ate of the fruit of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of pride, good and evil. All the nasty things in the world come from man's choices. And I'll tell you what, I'd rather have God working in my choices than have my evil choices working in me. At least I know that something in me wor working is good. And in man, there is no good thing. And they do not choose God. They would not choose God had not God have mercy. And that's the way it is. Thank you.